printing in multiple colors is actually really cool. <laughs> At least until you run into all that waste, the extra time, and anything else that might go wrong. So I got to thinking, what is one thing that I could do to not only get better and faster multicolor prints, but also minimize the amount of waste that I get? Well, of course, that one thing actually has six parts. Whether you're using Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer, the paint mode is a pretty robust and occasionally confusing part of getting an awesome print. I'm confused. Six different brushes that are completely different in what they do. But even having a rudimentary knowledge of each one of those brushes, along with some of the pitfalls along the way, well, that can help us all get better prints. Bamboo has a web page with information about all of these brushes, but I found it doesn't really tell the whole story. Yes, but that's not the whole story. But if you want to check it out, I'll have a link for it and any of the models I use in this video down in the description, along with all my contact stuff. Please like and subscribe. Getting started, my personal best practice is to set up my filament colors first and then I decide what color has the most area, and then I make that the whole model color. Personally, I like that to be color 4, so I can easily switch between hitting the 1, 2, and 3 key to change the colors. But that's up to you. By the way, at the bottom of the paint box, you'll see a little keyboard. Click it at any time to get the shortcuts for each tool. And want to see something that'll blow your mind? Hold down Alt, Shift, and hit Enter to toggle back and forth, and you'll get to see the wireframe of your model. Now that's a lot of triangles. The first brush on the list is the circle, and according to Bamboo, it's only supposed to paint on the model surface, which it actually does quite well, except when you have a thin area or a corner or even over a cutout area, because then all bets are off. <laughs> Depending on how big your brush size is, I've seen the color go under the surface all the way to the center of the print. Still, it's probably the tool most of us will use when we're painting and filling in areas we want to print with different colors. Just be sure to check occasionally and make sure you're not getting too crazy with all the infill painting. By the way, before leaving the circle brush, you've probably noticed that slider called Section View. This is for when you just want to paint a certain area and not worry about touching others. One thing to remember about it is that you will always cut away your model based on the orientation before you went into paint mode. So whichever side's facing the bottom of your screen, that's where the cut starts. Well, next up is a brush I don't use all that often. It's called Sphere. This tool's for when you actually do want to color all the way into the middle of your print or even all the way onto the back of it. It works really similar to the circle brush, and I typically use this one to color a head or a hand or something like that. It's great for when you have a section that's round and mostly one color. And that brings us to the triangle. Most people will probably have the most trouble understanding this one, but if you've used Fusion 360 or another high-end CAD program, it'll just sort of make sense. Basically, and this is very basic, all 3D models are made up of a mesh of triangles. Using the triangle tool allows you to select some of those triangles to paint. Remember, we looked at the wireframe. Uh, I honestly haven't found a whole lot of use for this, but I can see the possibilities. A flat side with many triangles could all be painted the same color, which would give very sharp and crisp edges. But it seems like most of the things I want to paint like that are curved or rounded, so your mileage will vary on how and when to use this one. Now, if you really want to go crazy, you can even make each triangle a different color. I don't necessarily recommend it, but, you know, if you're going for the world record for print time and filament waste, go for it. Also, one other quick tip on the triangle brush. You don't have to just click to make the color. Try clicking, hold down the left mouse button, and drag it over multiple triangles. Quick and clean. Now, height range is one of the best tools available, if you get it right. I can't tell you how many times I've zoomed in and moved up and down to just the right spot, and then it's too much. Start over. A tip I learned from Photoshop, get almost to where you want to stop, but then let go of the mouse button. Now, if and when you make a mistake, undo will only fix that little section, not the whole piece. Orientation is very important with this one, especially if you're just trying to get the sides. But this tool does something else you really need to understand. It colors the entire model all the way through. 
It's important to know this for a number of reasons, but the main thing is time and filament. By doing the walls and everything in between, now your model has only one color to print for all the layers, and that includes your infill. But make sure to check your tops and bottoms, because uh, usually I'll get the sides done and forget about the bottom, and then I have to go back and fix that. This is also a great way to save time and filament if your model has different heights, and you just need a few layers on the top to be different colors. For instance, look at the top of this box I printed for my daughter a while back. The edge of the box goes up slightly over the inside, and then the letters go up a good bit more. I have a couple of options, but the easiest and quickest way would be to paint the sides using height range. Then I can switch colors and finish off the letters the same way. Now, make sure your brush height isn't too big, and don't forget the bottom. Also, if you want the inside of the top to be a different color, and you don't mind a small band of that color showing on the outside, you can click once right on the middle area, and it'll fill it right in. But, if you want the top inside area to be a different color without that little band, or you want the text to be all one color, don't fret. The next brush has you covered. Well, other than the circle brush, the fill tool is probably going to be your next favorite way to paint. It reminds me of those uh, click-to-paint coloring books on tablets and phones. Exactly what its name says, just click on a section and fill in the color. You'll most likely want to make sure edge detection is on so the color doesn't bleed into different areas. Try turning off edge detection on a rounded or multifaceted model, and you'll see what I mean. With edge detection on, you'll also have a slider for the smart fill angle. If you do want to have your color go into those parts right next to where you're painting, but not into other sections, play around with this setting. And if you want to change it up a little bit more, you could make the letters all be the same color. But, to save time, I do recommend making the letters the same color as the base all the way up, and then just change the very top layer color. Really, it's all in how long you want to wait versus the aesthetic of all those colors. This last tool on the list is a little bit different. Gap Fill isn't the absolute best at its job, but it's definitely worth giving it a try if you have a paint job that's looking a little bad. Using all the previous tools will occasionally leave you with some jagged edges, and with Gap Fill, you can try to adjust those. For instance, here's a robot hand controller holder I got from STL Flix. I've been messing with painting it for some time, but here you can see not everything got filled in with the fill tool. Adjusting the gap area slider, a lot of the holes get filled in. Great! But not all of them, and for the most part, not any of the edges. So there's still a ways to go on this tool, but it's getting there. Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer both have an incredible paint tool that really lets you customize your prints. And if you've watched even one of my videos, you know I'm all for customization. Experimenting and learning these tools and more, those are the best ways for all of us to learn, create, and amaze.